What's going on, amazing people? I hope that you guys are doing exceptionally well. Wanted to hop on here and uh, check in with you guys on the day. Um, I want to do a thing um, where I'm able to do like a, um, what's going on? I want to do a thing where I'm able to like do a daily um, check in with you guys, right? Hey y'all, hey, 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 hey. Hope that you guys are doing awesome. Y'all know how I do. I be wanting to make sure that y'all good, right? So I want to do a thing where I do a daily check-in with you guys. I'm still going, you know, trying to figure out what time is best for me to do it. And with this, it'll be like uh, maybe a 15-minute something. I'm trying to figure out if I should, like, record it then put it up for you guys so that you will have it or whatever versus trying to do it live and then we go live at a later time because now I'm being strategic in what I do and I'm trying to make sure that I show up for you guys in the way that you need, right? Today has been good. I got a much later start than I wanted to get. Um, and usually when I'm thinking about things and contemplating on things, guys, it usually worked that way for me. Um, I got my lab results back and they say, hey, you you low in vitamin D. So as y'all can see, I'm like sitting out here deliberately in the sun. And I said, let me talk to y'all, you know, in a place that uh, will benefit me, right? The uh, topic of the day is something that I think that we all can relate to, though. We're talking about, you know, it's time to switch it up, right? Hey there. Hey, 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 hey. Like I always like to do for those of you who've been rocking with me, I appreciate you guys so much because you don't have to do it, but I'm so glad that you did. I'm glad that you are here with me. Keep rocking with me. You are appreciated. For those of you, maybe your first time. Don't let it be your last. You welcome once, twice, three times. You are welcome. And for those of you who may be watching this replay, just simply write the word replay in the comment bar and, you know, just let me know you came to check your girl out. Y'all welcome to the house. Come on in. Come on in. Welcome to the house. Now, we do have house rules. House rules are very simple, though. Like, you, you can't just... Uh, you know, you can't come in doing like you want to. That's like coming in somebody's house without knocking on the door. Meaning, don't be coming in here putting in your your links, your websites, and all that other kind of stuff, and uh, advertising, and don't, don't do that. That's rude. You you don't walk in somebody's house without knocking. That's what that seems like to me. Then you got the ones, you know, you real bold. You rude, okay? Your energy is off. You like to insult people that's in here. We ain't doing that either. That's like putting your foot up on my furniture or either going to my refrigerator and you ain't asked nobody, you ain't washed your hands, you ain't did nothing, okay? Now, if you do that, if you do that, okay, you be put out the house. Yeah, I know the immunity, that, that's um good too, but at the same time, let me tell y'all something. You do not need some things, and this is, this is a part of why I wanted to talk to y'all. We have gotten, um, we have gotten so used to um, subsidizing, using the alternative ways, and you know taking the easy way, as some would say, or the quick way, as some would say. Gloria said, "Can I come in? Come on in, baby." That we don't do the the basic stuff like vitamin D. I already know I can get it from being in the sun, right? So, key to get your behind in the sun. Now, of course, if you got a multivitamin or you got something that boosts your immune system and it has vitamin D in it and all that other stuff, come on now. Yeah, let's make it do what it do. But what about the things that cost you nothing? What about the things you can do and you can implement? The only thing that it requires, the only thing it requires is for you to be consistent. I'm sorry, y'all. Terrence. Chance, Byron, come here, baby. You, you feel what I'm saying? That's the only thing that it's going to uh, require. Yeah. Tell your dad to call uh, Quan. He just called me, but I'm live. I want to make sure everything's straight. So tell him to call. Um, you, you feel what I'm saying, guys? Like... Okay, thank you. Like some things, even with, let's be all the way real, even with um, 
you know, I can't, um, for whatever reason, you know, I'm just in a funk. I can't get up and, you know, I, it just hurts so bad whenever I try to do certain stuff. It's because you're not moving. Let's do the basic stuff first. You go to the doctor and they go, hey, Avery, hey, baby, they're going to treat you for what it is you're telling them you have complaints about. Yeah, they're going to give you something to address your pain. Yeah, they're going to give you something to address your depression. Yeah, they're going to give you an anti-whatever they need to give you to go against whatever you're complaining about. But at the end of the day, baby, I'm telling you, you need to switch stuff up. You need to get up and move around. You need to make sure that you're not being still all day long. You need to make sure that you're drinking enough water, like basic stuff. You got to switch it up. You will be surprised at how your body will treat you once you start treating it the way that you should. You'll be surprised at how much clearer you are when you start, you know, not eating so much of a certain type of food and you start implementing other type foods. You know what I'm saying, guys? So it's just the basic things. Even with me, even with me, right? Y'all know that I tell you I'm the hope dealing on the purpose pusher. Y'all already know that. You already know that I'm comedian the key to be. You know that. You know that I'm a nurse consultant. You know that. You understand? You, you know these things about me. Those are titles about me. But what ends up happening is whatever version of me that you met, that you became connected with, that's the version that in your mind you will always think that I need to maintain. But the reality of it all is sometimes you have to switch it up. I don't have to stop being inspirational, motivational, and giving um, hope to people. I don't have to stop, um, you know, having my nurse hat on, and I don't have to stop being funny. I'm all of those things. I'm all of those things. But at what moment and at what time am I going to transition and pivot into that higher thing that I've been called to do or that I desire to do? to be able to move forward, to be able to catapult more people to where they need to be. It's so many people that are comfortable with being right where you are. So many people are comfortable without people checking them. You want somebody to check on you, but you don't want nobody to check you. I'm going to say it again. You want somebody to check on you, but you don't want nobody to check you because you've gotten comfortable in your dysfunction. You've gotten comfortable with doing the, the bare minimum. You've gotten comfortable with splurging and wasting your money on one, on one aspect of life. But then when somebody come and they tell you like, look, you need to look into doing this or invest your money here. Well, why don't you do Well, how much is it's cheaper than a funeral? That's my answer to everything. Especially if it's something going to benefit you. How much is it? It's cheaper than a funeral. That's how much it is. I don't know if I can afford that. Do you go out to eat every day? Or do you take your lunch from the house? I break down things in a way where a person can see it for themselves. In life, you will have people that will give you a title. And if you're not careful, when they throw it at you, you will catch it. And then you will start trying to mold yourself around what they've given you, huh? He's straight. He's straight? We sure? What, he didn't want nothing? He did. What was it? He wanted to ask me. Ask me? So did he ask your dad? Did he ask me? All right. All right. Thank you. You, you feel what I'm saying, family? So... Even, I think one of the biggest things that um, hold people back from moving forward is number one, they are concerned about what's, what others will say about them in that transition, in that pivot, or in, the, in that motion. They're concerned about what people are going to say about them. And I know people, um, uh... I don't care what people say about me. Don't be, don't worry about what people say. What people say about you is none of your business. All of that is true, but I deal with facts. Okay. I deal with reality. Although that is the way that some of you feel, you don't believe that mess. And you don't believe it. Why? Because that's what keeps you stuck where you are. You, you so focused on, uh, what are they going to say? Or how will I be perceived? And, um, you know, what am I going to do if somebody say this or this happens or whatever? And can I tell you, there's nothing wrong with feeling that way to a certain extent. 
There's nothing wrong with a certain extent. Baby, somewhere between Genesis and Revelation, somewhere between there, it's in there. This ain't Bible study, but I just want to throw this in there. Jesus was talking to one of his boys. He was like, bro, he was like, huh? He was like, um, who does man say that I am? You think he really cared? You think it was going to hurt his feelings? You think that he was going to be like, oh, don't nobody love me. The Messiah, you think he was going to be doing all that? Nah, but he was curious. Who does man say that I am? Then he just started rattling stuff off. He was like, child, some people say you John the Baptist. Some say you just a mere prophet. Some say you some other boy from somewhere. I can't even remember, Lord, but they said you was from over there. He was like, oh, okay, that's, that's, that's all right, okay. Well, let me ask you this. He was like, I'm all right, talk to me. He said, who do you say that I am? Good God Almighty. He was like, ooh, ooh. I never thought you asked, bruh. I know who you are. Baby, I was there when the man couldn't see and you spit in that dirt and put mud on his eyes. He was like, <laughs> I can see clearly now the rain is gone. Like he could see. I was there whenever, hey, you went up there to that deaf man, you slapped him across his ear. He was like, huh? <laughs> can you hear me now? Lord, I was there when that lame man was laying down there. You went and you arose him, baby. And he got up like, I do the stinking leg. Hey, I was there. I was there when you did all of that. Lord, I know who you are. You are the son of a living God. Yeah. He was like, I know. Jesus was like, say no more. At the end of the day, plenty of people will have an idea of who you are. Plenty of people will put a title on you. Plenty of people will describe you in a certain way. But the ones that you are called to, the one that you are speaking to, the one that you're going to be a part of their advancement in life, they'll know exactly who you are. They don't have to guess. They don't have to try to figure it out. But at the same time, I promise you, if Jesus had been like, you know what, I'm sleeping this morning, I'm tired. Now, I know I'm, I'm the son of the living God. I know that. I know I came so that you will have life and have it more. But I know that. I know I'm going to have to go to Calvary and all that stuff. That's why I'm rest. I'm tired. If he knew what he was called to do, he knew what his purpose was. But yet and still, he was like, you know what? I'm tired this morning now. I know that people over there that need to be saved. I know miracles need to happen. I already know that. And I know them people over there, I know. But they're going to have to wait. They're going to they they have to wait. Hey, Kevin. Now I'm tired, I'm going through, I'm feeling some kind of way. I ain't used the bathroom today. I, ain't, I got too much going on. But now, <laughs> at the end of the day, what? Got up. He spoke what he spoke. He talked that talk. He knew who he was. Who, who shall I say sent me, Lord? He said, I am. You got to go back through Genesis and Revelation to find this one too. I got to go back there. Pharaoh, his, own, his people coming at me, and I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Got all this water. I can't swim, and I can't drink all this water. What is we going to do? Like, I ain't doing nothing. What you got in your hand, bro? I ain't got nothing but a stay, uh, this stick, this rod, or whatever. This. All right, then. Stretch it for him. Baby, you got to use what's in your hand. You got to use what you're equipped with. You got to use the knowledge that you have. You got to use the confidence that you have. At the end of the day, it is what you have. It's what you possess. And then you turn around. He was like, okay, I got to go back and holler at Who shall I say sent me? He said, tell him I am. He said, all right, I'm, I'm going to go tell him I am. But you got a middle name or something, a last name. Like, what's your full name? So I can go tell him. You said, He said, tell him I am that I am, baby. <laughs> when I read that right there. In my head, I was like, he was like, I am <laughs> that I am. Baby, the head was moving. That posture was up. <laughs> I don't know if he was grabbing words out the sky or whatever, but I was. <laughs> I am that I am. Baby, I felt something down in my shine on when I read that. I said, God, oh my, I am that I am. Baby, you are, period. It ain't no, I want to be, I desire to be, I'm trying to be. Oh, please. With your depressing mouth. You you forever out here telling people, how oh, the Lord is good all the time, all the time. God is good. But then whenever somebody have a one-to-one -one conversation with you, they leave needing counseling with your depressing mouth. 
Your thoughts become things. What are you thinking about? What's on your mind? What do you really want? Because I was told that what you have around you is what you have accepted. And I used to be like, lies. No, it ain't. I ain't accept this mess. I don't want this. But at the end of the day, you got to check yourself. Because if it's something that you're not accepting, what are you doing to change it? Some of you, you want to give it up. You and like, you know what? I'm tired because I'm tired of trying. I'm tired of being there and I'm tired of doing whatever. But you hadn't made a shift though. You tired of it, but you're still around it. You tired of it, but you're still sleeping with it. You tired of it, but you're still going to pick it up. You tired of it, but you're still answering the phone. What happened? What happened? Oh, okay. I thought you was tired. It's time to switch it up. At the end of the day, baby, let me tell you something. You are only going to get what you believe you can have. You are only going to get what you believe you can have. I have seen some people, I know they're not as talented as me. I know they ain't. I know, babe, listen, I know for a fact they not. Baby, they told me. They were like, girl, I don't know why in the world you ain't did such and such. Because, honey, if, if you ever come into the game, I'm telling you right now, I'm, I'm just going to find me something else to do because you're going to kill it like they knew. But guess what? It didn't matter what they knew. I didn't believe it about myself. And because I didn't believe it about myself, guess what? I got the results of my belief. You get the results of your belief. All of this... I'm sorry, guys. All of this back and forth and you trying to figure this out and you trying to figure that out. Baby, why not start with what you've already figured out? Why not move forward in the direction you already know you want to go in? Half of you playing, like my grandma said, you playing crazy. Because people that's crazy don't know they're crazy. But when you can identify it, it just lets me know that there's something that you have that is a barrier keeping you from doing whatever it is. But the beautiful thing about barriers are they are meant to be torn down. They are meant to be broken. When is something that's going to benefit you? When is something that's going to benefit you? Barriers work both ways. You understand? Barrier works both ways. You can either apply one so that you can set uh, standards and requirements for people, or you can have one up there that's going to keep you from where you need to be. There was another thing. This is the last one. It's somewhere between Genesis and Revelation. Now, you go and look it up now. I told you this ain't Bible study. But anyway, it was this dude in there, right? He was hollering at the Lord. He was like, you know what, Lord? My son. He crazy. He got something going on with him. He's so possessed with stuff. I have did all I could do. I've had my boys come and do what they can do. The women came and did what they can do. All the things that we've been taught, all the things that we know to do, we have done it, but he's still acting a fool. And we know it's, up, it's above us. We don't know what to do. You know, it's different. It's different when you're a parent. It's different when you go in and you petition them for your child. It's different when you got to go and put, put their name on the list. It's different when you got to call them up for this one right here. It's different. Baby, it's different. You will, you will do things you never thought that you would do before. You will go places you never thought that you would go. Sometimes you will say things you never thought that you would say. Baby, you will even consider some things you never would have considered before. If you know for a fact that it's going to save your kid. He was hollering at him. He said, Lord, listen. I know what you can do. I believe in who you are. But God, I want you to help my unbelief. Baby. Russ said, I want you to help my unbelief. I want you to help my disbelief. Meaning, there will be times you know for a fact this is what you're supposed to be doing. You know you're on the right track. You know that you just need to keep going. You need to keep moving. You believe it, but there's something on the inside. There's something that keeps reminding you of some foolishness. There's something that keeps on tugging at you that help you not believe as much as you once did. God, I believe you, but help my unbelief. Some of you guys need help with your unbelief.
It's just that simple. It's just that simple. I have things that go on, guys, that I don't talk to people about. I be overwhelmed with things sometimes. I be feeling some type of way sometimes. I be feeling like, Lord, I'm always, you know, dishing out. I'm doing this and I'm showing up and I'm, what, what about me, though? Like, send, send somebody to me. Put me on somebody's mind. Let somebody be like, send me a, a, a cash app thing. Not a request, but just send me one. Send me something through PayPal. Huh? Send me a card in the mail. D do something. Let me know that you care. Let me know I'm not forgotten. Let me know I'm not doing this for no reason. Let me know that I'm showing up the way I need to show up. Then this right here, baby, this right here gonna help somebody. This right here gonna help somebody. I was like, oh. Somebody put aha in the comment bar. This was my aha moment. I'm gonna share it with y'all. And then I'm gonna get up off of here. Baby, I had this aha moment. And I said, ooh. Okay, Lord. I, I got it. I got it. Time to switch some stuff up. Somebody put aha in the comment bar. Natasha said, aha. Yeah, your, your labor will never be in vain, though, baby. Don't feel down, you know, when, when you doing good for people. I see some ahas. Aha. Baby, uh, Ashley, close enough, baby. All we need is an A and an H. We'll mix it up. <laughs> Listen. So, I'm sitting there trying to figure out, okay, I want to be able to do X, Y, and Z. And I want to be able to do this for my people. And my people don't all look like me. My people are the ones who uh, are the go-getters. You're the go-to for your family. You're the one that, you know, sometimes, half the time you was the black sheep. You really want to move forward, but you feel like you got so many other appendages. Like you got different things attached to you or responsible for so many other things. Half of them you put yourself responsible over. But we ain't going to go there today. You got all of these things going on. So I was like, I want to be that one for that person in transition. I want to be that one for this. You know, I'm just going through all these kind of things. Baby, let me tell you something. Clear as day, I heard the poor will be among you always. Now, that's somewhere between Genesis and Revelation 2. And I was like, well, okay, I, I knew that. But I'm like, what they got to do with me? God knows. That mean I'm going to always be, um, you know, around people saying, let me hold something. What that mean? You know what I mean? Nah, baby. You can be poor in mindset. You can be poor in spirit. You can be poor emotionally. You can be poor in your health. You can be poor financially, of course. Poor can be all about you. Mind, body, spirit, and soul. It can be poor. It can be in a poor state. It can be in, in a poor position. So because, listen at this, baby. This is my aha moment right here. Keta, because you are feeding them in that poor state, they have become comfortable with being poor. Miss Hope Dealer, Purpose Pusher, the Miss Remember You Are Somebody, So Am I, The Lord Loves You, and So Do I. Yeah, all of that is good, Keta. You want to motivate them, you want to inspire them. But you have to start provoking them. You have to start allowing them to see that the place that you're in mentally, spiritually, physically, your soul, but down in your shun or not, that place that you are in, you will always be. Until you make up in your mind that you want to go further. Until you invest in yourself. Until you invest in somebody else. He gives seed to the sower. You're not sowing anything. 
until you understand that that place that you were able to get from, that place I was able to pull you from, Kita, they can come from their place too. But you've made it too comfortable for them because you are always nurturing and babysitting the foolishness. Now, in my mind, it wasn't foolishness. No, because they down and they out and I got encouraged and I got a motivation. Yeah, but you down and out because you continue to go back to that place that's holding you down. You know it's no good for you. You know there's better for you. You know that you can be doing things different, but this has become comfortable for you. And until you decide to shift mentally, you won't shift physically. It's time to switch things up. You have to make shift happen. You got to make it happen. When you don't, you're going to continue on going through what you're going through. You're going to continue on having to rob Peter to pay Paul. You're going to continue on having to make arrangements for a bail's bondsman to go and get your children. You're going to continue on raising your daughter's children while she's out there being community property to everything and everybody else because her mindset is not where it need to be. And she feel like the only way she can get through life is through her butt. Let's be all the way real. You're going to continue on paying your mama, your daddy, your uncle, whoever bills because they got this habit that they have. You're going to continue doing those things because you are making it comfortable for them to be in their poor state. He said, I know the plans I have for you, not just me or you, for all of us that desire to have it. But sometimes we become so successful in our own right that we come into a seat of judgment. We start telling people, well, if, you could, if I did it, you can do it. Well, you just don't, and you just, and we soon forget. How soon do we forget where we come from? How soon do we forget what it took for us? How soon do we forget how many times we screwed up before we got it? But at the end of the day, you don't have it all together. You don't. None of us do. If all of us always had it together, we wouldn't need him. You got to switch things up. Now, I'll be all the way real with you. I struggled for the longest, and I still, you know, have issues with it now if I'm going to be all the way real. I struggled with letting go. I struggled with letting go. And because I struggled with letting go, guess what? It went to every aspect of my life. I struggled with letting go in my personal life. Then I struggled with letting go in my business life. Then I struggled with letting go just with anything that pertained to Kita. I would try to find a way. Well, we can look at it like this. Well, maybe we can consider this. Well, maybe they need, no, they don't need none of that. They don't need none of that. They need for you to let it go. They need to see that there's other options out there for them, whether it's good or bad or indifferent. But at the same time, they need to know that when it comes to you, you have a standard. The problem is you don't have a standard. And because you don't have a standard, people are handling you any way that they feel like they want to handle you. They don't show up for you the way that they need to show up for you. Why? Because ain't nothing going to happen when they don't. They don't do what they say they're going to do. Why? Because you ain't going to do nothing no way. You might get mad. You might cuss them out. You might say whatever it is. All they, they, can, they know they can wait you out. And once they wait you out, all is going to be well. All is going to be well. You got to switch things up. You got to switch things up. Even with me and the way that I want my brand and my business to go 2021, guys, I've been building that now so that when 2021 gets here, it's already established. Now, I know that I have a certain demographic. And I know they're going to need certain things. But even whenever you feel like you're at the bottom, so to speak, right? Even when you feel like you're starting from the beginning, or I don't even know how I'm going to do, I'm lost, and all of this stuff that we say and that we hear somebody else say and we repeat, there'll be an option for you. But guess what? Even in those options, it's going to require a commitment. Too many of y'all are so willing to give your all and to overextend yourself with things and people that have no commitment to you. When it's all said and done, 
I need for you guys to understand and I need for you to remember that the most expensive thing that you can do is pay attention to the wrong person. You need to connect with somebody that's gonna help you grow. You need to sow into that person. Whatever it is that you desire to do, you need to identify somebody who's already doing it, already has success stories. They are a success themselves. Whenever you think about something that you uh, desire to move forward in, you need to understand that that desire is there for a reason. There will always be a reason for you to doubt yourself, but that's what you have to build on. You have to stand on doubt's neck deliberately and build yourself up in the things that you need. What you know how to do, your strengths, you make sure that you magnify that. The things that you might struggle with, the things you need help with, there's always somebody out there doing what needs to be done on your behalf. The problem is you, wanna, you want somebody to give it to you. You want, well, I give to so many other people when I need it. I ain't never got nobody there. That's not true. When you need it, you have things and people and resources there. You just don't want to pay for access. You either going to serve your way or you're going to pay your way to the place that you desire to be. And some of you, you act like you get an allergic reaction when you hear the word serve. If Jesus came to serve us, what in the entire hell makes you feel like you ain't going to have to serve nobody? You serving everybody else is taking advantage of you. You serving people every time they ask you to send them something, knowing that they misusing you. You out here serving booty to somebody that's getting served by other places. You out here serving knowledge and uh, experience and education and all this other stuff for a company that if you mess around and get sick for four days instead of the three that they give you, they gonna X you out. But whenever it's something that you wanna do, when it's something you want to nurture for yourself, you want to build yourself from the inside out. I ain't doing all that. I, I, I ain't. Okay, you don't have to. You don't have to. And I promise you, you will be another LinkedIn away trying to get uh, into another position where somebody else going to mistreat you too. I said what I said. I said what I said. Listen to me. Start shifting the things that you're doing. Some of you know, I'm a giver. I just want to make sure, you know, as long as I serve and people are happy, then I'm happy. That's a lie. That's a lie. You know how many people say that? And then when I sit down with them and I ask them, well, you know, what's your plans or what's your goals? They don't even have any. It's easy for you to feel fulfilled for other people when you don't have any desire on your own. It's easy for you to feel that way. You over there crying and feeling some kind of way and down and depressed and you don't know why. Why? Because you have no vision. It's easy to be confused when it's a blank canvas. It's easy to not know what to do when you don't have any direction. It's easy to feel like a failure when you don't even know how to set yourself up to win. It's easy. I've been there. I've been there. I'm not talking at you guys. I'm not talking junk. Baby, I'm talking from experience. Everything I talked about has been about me. So if you felt some kind of way, you know, and it's don't on your little toes or whatever, and, and, and you bothered by it, then that just let me know that it resonated with you. But I was talking about me this whole time. I've had the experience where I was trying to figure out, Lord, who am I? <laughs> then mess around and found out that the I am is on the inside of me. Please, they called me Keita. They said, who are you? I am. <laughs> I am that I am. That's who Keita is. <laughs> Miss me with it. Now, I don't say that out loud because you'll never get a business deal like that. But in my head, baby, I'm about that life. Baby, I'm about that life. In my head, please. When I'm up there talking to business people and everything, y'all ought to see you, girl. Baby, I be, I get, I be real cute for y'all now. Y'all know how I do. I ain't gonna let you down. Baby, I be real cute. I have on fresh hair. Yeah, I have on fresh hair, honey. Be real cute. Have my little outfit on or whatever. They be asking me certain questions. I be like, <laughs> yeah, um, that was a good question. And I go right into it. <laughs> but in my head, though. Nikita, well, what can you do or what do you have to offer us that will benefit us? I'm like, what? What, what you mean? What I got? What you mean? Oh, 
That's a good question. Well, in what area do you want me to discuss first? <laughs> I give them them teeth, honey. Oh, you get all them teeth, baby. <laughs> huh? Why? Because sometimes you got to encourage yourself. Sometimes you got to encourage yourself. Sometimes people are not going to get you. Sometimes they're not going to understand what it is you're trying to do. That's why even with what I do, even with the things that I help people with, I used to be so broad with it. You understand? I used to be so broad with it. I'm like, oh, I know how to do that. Oh, well, yeah, I can help you there. And people would randomly just ask me about different things, and I'll be helping them with whatever it was. Then I had to understand. I had to understand this. I can't be everything to everybody. You can't either. I can't be everything to everybody. You cannot either. You understand? But the thing that I am a beast in, that thing that I have that creative power in, baby, I know about starting up and I know about transitioning. So that's where I rest my hat. Business 101, branding 101 to 103, baby. It's like a whole college course. You understand? Know like these are the things that I know. These are the things that I understand. These are the things that I've invested my, in myself in. These are the things I can do just literally laying down. And you can wake me up out my sleep, ask me a question about it, and I got an answer for you. Why? Because it's on the inside of me. If you got to, if I got to study it, if I got to look it up, or if I got to ask somebody else about it, I don't even uh, allow people to come to me for that. I will refer somebody. Period. That's the way I roll. That's the way I tell other people too. It's easy to take somebody money. It's easy to tell them, oh yeah, I'm able to help you. Oh, oh yeah, I know how to do that. But what do you rock in though? You might be good in that, but what are you great in? What are you great in? right you have to understand that there's an opportunity for all of us out there but there's something that you do that really stands out from everybody else there's something that you do that's different from everybody else and when you do this thing when you offer this thing it makes people feel so amazing down and they shine on our baby and when they feel so amazing it lets you know bam that's my sweet spot that's what it is. I know people come to me for clarity. They come to me for confidence. And they come for me for content. They need to be clear. What is it that they need to do? When well, Nikita, I got so many ideas. I'm trying to figure out what it is I need to do. Or they have their idea. Nikita, I need to know how to get started. Or they've been doing a little something. something. They're like, Nikita, I want to know how to be able to pivot this to the next level. It's clarity. People come to me for clarity. People come to me for confidence. Baby, if I can't do nothing else, baby, listen. Listen, you, I will, if you are a person that mop floors, when you leave me, you're going to feel like there's nobody out there that has ever mopped the floor until you came and did it. Why? Because I know how it feels not to have that confidence. I know how it feels to be overwhelmed with comparison and all of the other stuff that really gets you down in your spirit. I know how that feels. But the trick of it all is this. I also know that in order for you to increase your confidence, that you have to increase your competence. As I ask my kids, what you know about that? Mom, then I'm going to do this, this, and that. Okay, what you know about it? Because I know this. If you know a thing and it's on the inside of you, baby, you confident with your answers. But if you have a, a raw moment, like my grandma used to do when I asked her something, she'd be like, oh, raw, uh, I ain't confident in that, grandma. <laughs> I don't care nothing about age being, uh, uh, you know, wisdom and all that. No, no, that, that piece of wisdom right there is doubtful. <laughs> you can't uh, raw me. And then it's content. They want to know, like, um, I got this, but I want to structure it. I want to package it. I'm trying to position it. I'm trying to do all of these other things. Oh, okay, yeah, let's look at what you have. What kind of content do you have? I don't have no content. Lies, baby. All of us have content. You are content. I am content. But because you're not clear, you can't identify what it is. That's what people come to me for. When I realized that, I said, well, shoot, I ain't got to go and worry about all of the other stuff. When they come to me and they like, Nikita, I want to build my social media. I want to build my following. Um, I, I want to be able to build my numbers. I said, oh, okay. 
in my mind, I know what they told me that, that they wanted, but you know what I know they need? They need content. You need confidence. And you need to be clear on who your audience is. You see how all of it fall back to the basics? When I prayed and I asked, I'm like, Lord, uh, tell your girl what you need me to do. He said, baby, stick to the basics. You know why? There will always be so many people that are there that need the basics that need to build this foundation. A lot of people, they have amazing abilities, skills, talents, gifts, and all that stuff. So they, they try to skip the bottom. They try to skip the basic, but what they don't understand is, baby, that's your foundation. But you with your little bougie self, experienced self, you got it, okay? Because you got it, you wanna start off here. You want to start off right here. You didn't build nothing from here to here to sustain you, to hold the weight whenever success or whatever comes and start weighing you down. So when you get back down to the basics, not the bottom, the basics, when you get back down to the foundation, you feeling some kind of way and feeling like a failure, when at the end of the day, baby, you are in a place that you need to be so that you can structure it and you can strategize and get back to this place and be able to sustain yourself. Period. Period. That's all. That's all. Then when you come like, oh, I want, um, do you have anything you can help me with marketing my business? And I want to be able to market and get it out there and get in front of as many people as I can. Number one, I already know you're not clear. Because when you say you want to get in front of as many people as you can, I know you don't know your target audience because you are not for everybody. Period. Baby, if Jesus wasn't for everybody, I promise you, you ain't going to be either. Everybody's not going to accept you. Huh? They got to be willing and they got to want you. You got to have the no like, and trust factor. So when you come to me, you say that, I already know you're not clear. You don't know who your target audience is. So what I know that that's the reason. So instead of you going out there wasting your money with somebody who's going to show, they're going to show you great information. They're going to give you the tools that you need, if they're credible, for you to be able to put yourself out there in front of people. But whenever you don't know who your target audience is and you use the tools and strategies that they give you, you look at it like they got a bad product. No, you got a bad production. <laughs> they don't have a bad product. You have a bad production. Why? Because you produce something in such a way that did not resonate with the people that you want to be in front of. Baby, that was just a little, you know what I'm saying? That was a, uh, that was a little tip right there. Uh, as, uh, as as they say, that was free game right there. <laughs> Period. So when somebody wants to know something or they come to me for a certain thing, I'm not that one that says, oh, yeah, I can help you and then figure it out. If I got to Google it, I'm not trying to help you because I'm not trying to learn something to teach you. No, I'm not doing that. I'd rather improve what I'm doing so that I will be undeniable when somebody think about, oh, um, I want to start a business, but I'm trying to such and such. Well, I've been doing this right here, but I really want to shift. I want to transition. I want to pivot. Automatically, they think, oh, baby, you need to holler at Nikita. You feel me? You have to have something about you that stands out so boldly that whenever that thing, that subject is even spoken into the air, somebody automatically thinks about you. That's what it is. When people think about being saved, they think about um, turning their life around. Who they think about? They don't think about their mama. They don't think about their grandma, their cousin, them, they whatever. They think about Jesus. Why? Because he came so that we might be set free. He came for all of us so that we'll be saved. He came, baby. Went up, go God for zeal. Huh? On Calvary's cross. Oh my God. Y'all know Southern Baptists. You can't leave without putting them on the cross and bringing them back up. Oh, he came. Huh? What they do? They hung him high and stretched him wide. Oh my God. Hung his head. And for who? Me and you, he died. There was one son they said, hung him high, stretched him wide. Hung his head. For me, he died. That's love. That's you say that. I said, first of all, you're selfish. You talking about for me, he died for us. They said, Keita, just stay, stick to the point. It's supposed to be personal. So she talking about herself when she say me. You talking about yourself when you say me. I said, oh, because I'm about to say, because me and the girl didn't get along. I thought she was trying to be petty because when she said it, 
She like looked dead in my face. Now you in the audience, they hung him high. She got a little funky arm up. They stretched him wide. He hung his head. Now you gonna look at me. For me, he died. That's love. I said, for us. For us. Yeah, he did that for us. They was like, Keita, everybody see you. Stop. I was like, oh, I don't want to say oh, you look quiet no more. Put me on the hymn to choir because they ain't petty. Huh? Everything the hymn to choir say, baby, they going to take you with them. What they say? We going in the upper room. Huh? We going in the upper room. The upper room. See, we going. But then I got off that choir because I wasn't ready to go yet. I'm like, we who? <laughs> You're alive. Uh -uh. That's all right. I just I just stay in the audience and just go along with whichever one I'm feeling in my spirit that day. So that's why I ain't on the choir. I know that nobody asked me that, but I just wanted to share my testimony. I just wanted to share my testimony, honey. Yeah. Yes, baby, the hymnal choir. I am a hymnal girl. Do you hear me? I'm a hymnal girl. Yeah. Think I won't. Baby, I always got something down on the inside ready to come on up. Sure do. Mm hmm Represent your click. I hope y'all been amazing. I hope y'all understood what I put out there. I did a video yesterday about uh, me receiving a card. Let me tell you something. That card blessed my little soul. It was so personal. I'm gonna put up a video about it when I get off of here. If you guys, if you guys want to send a card to somebody, somebody told me to put my cash app in here. Don't think I ain't, cause let me tell y'all what I did. I, I created a whole short link for my cash app. Who playing? Not Keita. Bit.do forward slash cash app me. <laughs> That's what it is. It goes straight to my cash app. I ain't got time to be spelling my name. Bit.do forward slash cash app me. Baby, you got to be clear. Huh? Huh? What you want us to do, cash app me? Y'all ask for it. There you go. But listen, I'm going to put it up. Her name is April. The card was amazing. It put the biggest smile on my face. And basically on the front of it, it was like the world needs more. And then at the bottom it said, more you. What? The, the world needs more of me? Little old me? Baby, I'm going to tell y'all something. That made me feel good down in my shanana. I'm usually up 2, 3, and 4 o'clock in the morning because I'm always doing something. I felt so warm. I'm serious. It made me feel so appreciated. I was able to go right on to sleep. You know what it also confirmed to me? I don't feel appreciated. I do to a certain extent. But then I thought about that thing. Why don't I? Why don't I? And then I came to the conclusion, Keita, you are looking for some things from people that are not equipped to give it to you. So if what you are giving to people, what you have to offer people, are persons who can't afford to give it back to you, but you can afford to tell somebody thank you, you can pick up the phone and check on, it doesn't matter if you can't fit financially afford to give a person something. I know you do, Avril. I know you do. I know you do. <laughs> And people don't know I'm a water bucket, baby. And they was like, oh, you so emotional. I'm not an emotional person per se, but baby, I, I will cry you a river. Either I'm very, very upset or I'm just very moved. It's the small things for me. It's the small things for me. And I know how it feels to be able to show up for people in small ways and it makes such a huge impact. I gave homework yesterday. I said, guys, call three people that are on your mind or that you haven't talked to and just tell them I'm thinking about you. I want to know that you are right. And, um, you know, you were on my mind. Love you. Whatever. It can be It can be real short. Call. Thank you, baby. Thank you, Ashley. Just, just call them. They need to hear your voice. If you can do it on, um, like, this thing, we can see. Well, we can't see each other, but I can see y'all stuff. Call them on FaceTime. 
I gave an example of you texting somebody, you good, yeah, I'm fine, and they in the corner with a liquor bottle in one hand and a knife in the other. They not fine. You need to see that they're fine. You need to hear that they're fine. You need to feel that they're fine. You won't get that through a text message. It's time for you to switch things up. It's, you called your three Miss Gloria? Awesome. It's time for you to switch things up. If you always email, okay, pick up the phone. You always text, pick up the phone. You always in somebody's inbox, pick up the phone. Somebody's birthday came up, so you want to get on the thread because Facebook reminded you or whatever social media prompt reminded you that it was their birthday and you want to get one of those things so you can send it out there. Pick up the phone, even if they don't answer, to call them and tell you happy birthday. Come on. With somebody on your mind and on your heart, call them. Y'all keep being amazing, okay? Know that I love you. I'm going to go ahead and go. For those of you who are on Instagram, y'all can click the link in my bio. You will see a thing on there that says, so where you grow. <laughs> so where you grow. Click that link. Go ahead and sow a seed. If you don't want to, you ain't got to. I don't, I don't want no bitter seed, honey, because you know whatever you plant is going to come up. Okay? It's going to come up. Y'all good? All hearts and minds clear? Y'all go ahead and get your coat now. I'll let y'all come in the house. It's time for y'all to go now. Go ahead and get your little coat. Get your coat and put it on. We don't we walk to the porch. <laughs> it's a little cool out here. I done walked y'all to the car. Y'all done got in your little car. You done crank it up. You got your heat on and you got the window down so we can still talk and stuff. But it's a little Irish out here. I'm going to go ahead and go. Oh, thank y'all for the stars. All hearts and minds clear. Who was that that had a question? What did it say? Ah, you wore your steel toe boots today. I done came on here and wasn't supposed to be on here but 15 minutes and came out here like a Baptist pastor with five closings. Is it real? I know the Lord is real to me. Uh, whoever asked that question, know that I did not ignore you. If you got it, if you can copy it and put it in here, like real quickly, I will answer it. I'm sorry about that. It was something about your parents. I'm glad you, you caught me too. It was something about your parents. Thank you, Yolanda. Sis, five clothes. <laughs> Dylan, you a mess I gotta make my last plate before I go uh uh we, we don't take to go place if they wanted to eat they should have came with you <laughs> it's 19 where you at and it's 19 degrees ooh, ooh, ooh. no ma'am no ma'am I will burn y'all up I keep my heat on like 80 in my room real talk <laughs> I keep my heat on 80 y'all so if you do ever come to the house for real, go ahead and put a little app in there that, that play the waterfall and so you'll feel like you're at the beach because I feel good. 32 degrees, where you at? Jesus Christ. Minnesota. Mm, 18 degrees in Minnesota. How I feel where y'all at? Mm -mm. I can't live like that. I'm trying to. Oh, Chicago. Okay. In New York, waiting on a snowstorm. Ah. ah. I want to go somewhere warm, y'all. Hey, Miss Gail. Thank you, Tamika. Should you feel guilty for not talking to your parents? Why don't you talk to your parents? It depends on why you not talking to them. Why are you not talking to your parents? Thank you, Valerie. <laughs> British, you a trip. 45, it's 45 in Florida? Well, Lord. 
You're welcome, DT. Trisha, you said it's great in North Carolina. Girl, I'm in North Carolina, child. My little finger's cold. Y'all, I'm telling you, I will have that heat on you. It's 44 in Louisiana. Yeah, I ain't coming there neither, child. Virginia, cold and storm. Oh, yeah, I ain't coming there neither. I ain't going there neither. Arkansas, 30. Mm. Snowstorm come 12 to 18 inch. Jesus Christ. My God. It's so cold at bite. I know what you're talking about. Ooh. Ooh. Los Angeles is 70 degrees. Okay. Because I won't change and they want to stay in their ways. Well, this is what I say. I tell people all the time because, you know, your parents, y'all know I get sensitive when it comes to your parents. I feel like you should maintain the type of relationships with your parents that allows you to maintain respect for your parents. If it starts to get disrespectful, you need to figure out what you need to do to be able to um, back off of it some. Not talking to them at all if that's what it requires in this season because it's toxic. I mean, I can't speak to that. You know what I mean? You have to do what's best for you. You have to do what's best for you. But in all things, maintain that respect. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Now may the Lord watch between me and thee while we're absent one from another. Here now forevermore we all say it. Amen. 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 Remember you are somebody so am I. The Lord loves you so do I. Till next time good people. I'm out. <laughs>